Hello everyone. My name is Imran and I am a lead engineer here at Cinematrics Technologies. And I'm going to be discussing uh, what is MTA SDS, uh, why do you need it for your email uh, infrastructure, uh, what are the requirements for MTA SDS, how do we publish the policies um, as well as the DNS record using Zeems, and then finally, what is TLS reporting, which is also very useful uh, in order to determine if there are any problems in your email. So let's get started. So MTSDS stands for Mail Transfer Agent Strict Transport Security. Um, using encryption when emails are sent from one email server to another is actually optional. When I say optional, I mean if the receiving end supports a feature called Start TLS, then the sender will start encrypting. However, if the receiving end is not able to support encryption, then the sender will never encrypt your emails. And then I'm going to talk about the man in the middle attack, where somebody uh, who can, who's able to watch the communication between sender and receiver can hide the feature exposed by the receiving end. And if I can somehow hide those features, the sender will never encrypt the email. So in order to do that, I am going to work with a test email account that I have. Um, it is a real account. Um, it has a real DNS record and everything is real. So everything that I do is actually on real accounts. All right, so let's get started. Um, before I actually start talking about the real subject here, I just want to mention a few things. First, um, I am using the community edition of Zines here. So everything that I'm about to show you is available in the free edition, which is community edition. So you don't have to pay anything. Um, second is that I am using um, a real domain name. So the bzine.com that you see here is actually real. I am connected to a real uh, host name, which is miles.cinematrix.com. Uh, and I am using HTTPS. Another thing that is important to mention is that I'm using uh, a certificate, an SSL certificate from Let's Encrypt. There are two benefits in using Let's Encrypt. First is free. So, you know, everybody loves free, right? But the more important benefit is that everything that I do with Let's Encrypt can be done programmatically. So I don't have to submit, you know, CSRs manually. I don't have to do any manual work. It just make sure that the configuration is correct and I just click a button and that's pretty much it. It does everything for you in the background. So that part is very, very uh, good when you use Let's Encrypt. And then lastly, um, I want to mention that I have integrated uh, GoDaddy's DNS server with Zeems. Since this domain name, bzine.com, is hosted on GoDaddy, the DNS server is also on GoDaddy. So I have integrated uh, GoDaddy's API into Zeems. This way it's going to make my life a lot easier. All right, so let's talk about MTSDS. So in order to do that, the first thing that I'm going to do is actually send an email to, to my Gmail account. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So this is just a test account. Uh, right, I'm sending a test message to Gmail. Now, once the message is sent, I make sure that it's in my live monitor. It's right here. And then I'm gonna look, I'm gonna take a look at the log file. And I'm gonna take a look at the outbound conversation.log. And when I click next, the last message is, is the communication that is going to Gmail. So I'm gonna copy this number here and I'm just gonna search for that number so I only get communication for one message. Now, if you notice here, there are basically two connections, even though there's one email. The first connection, which is right here, this is not encrypted. This goes out in the plane, and then when Gmail, so, so this IP address is actually Gmail's IP address, and, and these lines is what Gmail advertises these are the features that Gmail support. One of the features that Gmail supports is Start TLS. And when the, when the receiver supports Start TLS, the sender 
is going to use start GLS. So here is the line where Zeem says, okay, Gmail, I wanna start communicating with you um, in an encryption, encrypted manner. So that's what this is. And when that happens, Gmail says, yeah, sure, go ahead, start your encryption. So now all these lines are encrypted, even though they're, they don't appear encrypted in the log, but the actual email that went to Gmail is encrypted. Now here's the problem. Let's assume that there's an ISP in the middle or maybe some government agency or a bad guy. If somehow that person or that entity is able to hide this line, which is start TLS, the sender will never know that receiving and support start TLS. And because it doesn't stop support start TLS, the second connection will never start and that message will be delivered in the very first connection, which is not encrypted. So the data command that you see here is going to be in clear. It's not going to be encrypted. And that's where the problem is. And this is where um, MTSTS comes in. So let's see how MTSTS works in the background. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, these are the requirements for uh, MTSTS. The very first requirement is that I have to have a text record in the DNS server for underscore MTSTS um, dot bzine.com. Now remember, this bzine.com is a test domain name that I'm using for this uh, video. Uh, of course, you're gonna change it you know, to your own domain name. So that's a DNS record that you need. And whenever a sender tries to send an email, they're gonna do a DNS lookup. They're gonna see, oh, there isn't uh, a record exists for uh, underscore MTSTS. That means that the receiving end is probably supporting MTSTS. So that's the first thing that it's gonna do. The second thing the sender is going to do is try to fetch a web page on your website. Uh, and that web, web page is uh, mentioned below. So if both of those requirements are met, that means that the sender is going to use encryption. And if for whatever reason encryption cannot be used, the email will fail to deliver. Now, the third thing that is actually also a DNS, which is underscore SMTP dot underscore TLS dot design dot com. That is a DNS record that is required if you want TLS reporting. Now, even though this is optional, it is very important. So I'm going to leave this here and I will talk about the TLS reporting towards the end of this video. So for the time being, you need two DNS records and you need one web page. Now, the web page has to be on that exact same path. You cannot change the path for this web page. So the sender will expect something on that path. Second, the host name must be mta-sts.bzine.com. It has to use an SSL certificate and it must be on port 443. So those are the requirements for the web page. So the first two part, the DNS is pretty simple. A lot of people know how to add DNS servers or entries in DNS servers. The challenging part is publishing this document on the website because you have to spawn a web server, you have to purchase a certificate, all for just one small document. And, and that's where Zeems comes in. So let's talk about that part. All right, so let's see how that's done. For the, to do that, I go to reports, MTSTS. Now, since bzine.com does not have a policy yet, um, Zeems is going to display these steps, and these are the steps that I need to publish a document. The first step is already done, meaning that I have to configure the SMTP server to, um, to handle start TLS. That part's already done. The second one is uh, publishing mtsta.txt file, and it has to be published on this URL. Right? And that's, that's the part that I'm going to show you how to do that with Zeems. The, sec the third and the fourth steps are rel relatively easy because that's just uh, pushing a text record into uh, a DNS server. So let's, let's do the publishing right now. Now, in order to publish, there are two ways I can do that. The first one is recommended um, and through Zeems. And when you, 
when you do that, it does a lot of things for you. So I'll come back to that one. The second method is that you publish it yourself on any web server other than Zeus. Now, when you do that, you have to make sure that all these requirements are met, meaning the host name must be this. It has to listen on 443 and it has to have a valid certificate. Now, the benefits of using Zeems to publish this file is that it does all of these for you. So you don't have to worry about any of that. All right. So that and that's the part that I'm going to show you in this video. All right. So now let's talk about this policy file. So this is the suggested policy file. Of course, you can change it if you want to. Um, the mode is what defines how you want other servers to treat your domain. Initially, it should be test. It should be set to testing, and once you're comfortable with your settings and there are no errors, you can switch to enforce. The second line is a set of MX record. Now, Zeems already figures out the MX for you, and then it it creates. Uh, this line for you. If there are multiple MX, you will see multiple MX on this uh, on this side. The last line is the age in seconds that's basically used for caching purposes. Um, it is recommended that you you put this either a week or uh, two weeks so that servers don't hit your Zeems very often. All right. So once you're satisfied with this, all you gotta do is click publish. So now the publishing part is done. All right now, but but it's still uh, there are some steps that are left. So the first thing is that I need to have either an A record or a C name record so that this value resolves. OK, the second one is that I have to create an SSL certificate. Now, before I create the SSL certificate, I have to make sure that this part is complete. Because if the host name does not resolve anywhere, then I won't be able to create the SSL certificate. The last two steps there, you know, you can do it in any order, but you have to make sure that the first two steps, you don't change the order. All right, so let's do that. So in order for me to push this to GoDaddy, all I do is click this button. Now notice one other thing. Uh, Zeems creates a, a new tab for you, leaving this tab as is so that you can complete these tasks uh, at a later time. All right, so now um, all I gotta do is click Submit, and once done, it is going to push. So now it has been pushed. If I run this command from a command prompt, it should give me the results, okay? All right, before I go any further, I am going to complete the uh, step number three and step number four. So again, this is a text record into GoDaddy, and I click Submit. And that's done and then the, the last step which is this so now my DNS is configured meaning I have made three changes in my DNS first it adds a CNAME record for this and that CNAME record points to miles.cinematrix.com second I've added um, a text record for this uh, name and then another one for that name all right so that that part is done now, finally, I have to reissue the certificate. So before I reissue certificate, I just want to make sure that this is working. Because now the easiest way to do that is to just go here. Uh, either I can run an NS lookup, okay? Or I simply open another tab and type this. Now, if the Zeems interface comes up, that means that it's, it's done. And so right now I can see it's not done yet. Um, um, so I have to wait a little bit. Um, so I'm going to pause this video here and then come back after a few seconds once I know that my DNS is pushed. Okay, so I just did it again and now I see the DNS is there. Okay, now what I got to do is, is reissue the certificate. And in order to reissue the certificate, all I do is click here. Now. The current certificate is for miles.cinematrix.com and Zeems will automatically add another host name to the certificate. So I don't have to do anything. All I do is click submit, proceed. And once this is done, it should display that the certificate has been created and then I'm going to have to restart. Okay, so now my certificate has been issued and all I do is restart.
All right, so now my server has been restarted. If I go to reports, now I don't see any reports yet because um, I just configured it. So I have to wait about 24 hours in order to see some, some data, some real data here. Now what I did was, um, instead of showing you the report here, I have um, opened another tab in which I'm connected to Cinemetrics website. And this is the report that is generated by uh, on the Cinemetrics website. So here you can see the number of emails that were sent from Google and from Microsoft, and it displays the success rate and all that. Now, if there are any errors, you would see those errors down at the bottom. Right now, I don't see any errors because everything was fine. Um, so the goal is that you should run your MTSTS policy in testing mode for a few days. Make sure there are no errors. Uh, if there are errors, then you need to figure out why did those errors come up. If there are no errors, you can switch your policy. So in order to switch your policy, you go back to your MTSCS, you click uh, modify, and then you simply change this testing to enforce. And that is pretty much it.